of other great faiths. Contrary to the myth, conservatism has never been about reducing every decision to purely economic factors. And when that myth is propagated, when the idea uh, that uh, what is seen on a spreadsheet is all that is important, you miss the bonds that hold our communities together. You miss what gives our institutions their strength, what gives our country its identity. And when you conflate spending more with caring, you do exactly the same thing. It's the Marxist who really sees the world in that reductive way, just as Marx's successes distort every natural human relationship into a false dynamic of oppression and power. We believe in civil society. We also believe in the ability of the council, contractors, charities, businesses, and local groups to work together and deliver more for the residents of this borough. We should be optimistic about the future and in every way. After all, seven months ago, our side finished Councilor third Graham. in the Peterborough Time's Bar election. Up, I'm winding up. Things change, and anyone predicting the years ahead should know that this borough can change too. And whether on treasury management, for the better, whether on treasury management or on social value, with our approach, and only with our approach, will this borough change for the better. Councillor Salia. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, these most recent reports to the Council from the Finance and Corporate Resources Committee are, for me, are a vivid account of the benefits of a sound conservative management. There are real challenges to local authority budgets at the moment, but despite this, our debt levels are falling, our investment values are rising, the Treasury and capital papers aren't as exciting as some of the others on tonight's agenda, um, but they are an important part of this Council's job, and we are able to continue to fund all of our innovative projects as other local authorities are basically shrinking themselves back to the bare essentials, ones with continuing to invest in things like libraries, roads, schools, uh, and weekly bin collections, right across the sort of policy look. But it's not just about the money, it's about spending it wisely and getting best value for our residents. One of the fundamentals of conservatism as I see it is prudence. For us in Wandsworth, this manifests by keeping front and centre in our decision making, the recognition that every penny in the council budget belongs collectively to our residents and realising our responsibilities as councillors to these residents through making those pennies work as hard as they can in order to make this borough the best place to live. We meet these goals through our sound treasury management practice, through innovation in policy making and procurement, and across the range of services that we provide. The social value paper, which I know is not in this paragraph, I should have read the notes better before I started writing the speech, is, is amazing, because it, sort of, it really showcases this innovative approach, um, targeting things like social value right into our procurement process, measuring it over the project life cycles and refining it and feeding it back into our, our approach will mean that we can support our aspirations, such as diversifying our supply chain, using SMEs, social enterprises, even charities as um, suppliers, encouraging our suppliers to be responsible employers is another thing I feel really passionately about, looking at training and development opportunities, work experience placements for our school children, um, looking at things like the gender pay gap, um, and underrepresented groups as well in, in um, employment decisions. We're also looking at environmental procurement, keeping climate change right at the heart of everything we buy, looking throughout our supply chain at, at the impacts that every decision has. We want to be the greenest inner London borough, carbon neutral by 2030, zero carbon by 2050. And this is an, an aspiration that is only possible because of our financial management. Sound financial management, prudence in spending and investment, these are the things that will enable us to bring forward all the capital projects in these papers today. And these capital projects really, for me, show exactly what this council is about and about what this administration cares about. The West I won't go into because I know there, there are quite a lot of speakers on it later, but in addition to the West, we've got a huge tree planting project going on at the moment. We're transitioning the entire borough to LED lighting which is going to save a lot of energy. We're adding electric vehicle charging points, supporting cycling initiatives, transitioning to a low emission fleet to cut the emissions in our local area. We're also supporting our aspiration of making Wandsworth a great place to live. We've got loads of community projects going on, improving parks and public spaces and linking people up. 
as well as the huge capital spend on our housing estate regenerations, we've also got smaller improvements to our parks in Leaders Garden, Chivalry Road, near me, has had a, a massive makeover recently, it's amazing. Um, in Nine Elms, there'll be a new park, we're building links within the community. We also care for the residents who are most vulnerable. We've got quite a few capital projects in schools and on housing estates. I think of a couple of the capital projects that I wanted to really highlight in that area are the refurbishment and remodelling of Oak Dean and Falcon Grove, which provide respite care um, and also help us with vulnerable family assessments, really important. And also Gwyneth Morgan and St Michael's are getting money um, to improve the service for our older residents. I think it's important just to address Councillor Gasser's um, repeated remarks about the, the special educational needs funding. Paddock and Greenmead have had 19 and a half million pounds in recent years. The amount of need is going up in the borough. There is no doubt that the challenge, both within social services and children, but also in adults, needs are growing, the populations are more complex. But the funding is also going up year on year. There will always be the need for more money. I'm, I'm sure any the education cabinet member, the adult services cabinet member, would tell you they will always ask for more money. They will never, ever say no. <laughs> to, to, to extra cash to invest. It's really easy to criticise schemes and budgets, but ultimately the criticism is absolutely worthless if you repeatedly fail to put forward your own alternative budget or come up with any funded solutions for possible capital projects. Financial prudence, sound budgetary management, they're not exciting papers to speak to this evening, but the results do speak for themselves. Our borough is continuing to thrive, we continue to aspire for our residents to be the best, and we want Wandsworth to be the best place in London to live. Councillor Gibbons. Thank you. Uh, we've got a number of financial papers in front of us this evening, but not the actual budget paper, which is a little strange for a special budget meeting, but there you go. Um, maybe this is part of a Dominic Cummings-style disruption strategy. Um, we've got some Treasury management papers and capital spend papers. And what they show is the council has been more flexible in its use of capital funds to invest in infrastructure and more fruitful in its use of long-term investments to boost returns. Uh, these are measures which the Labour Group has been urging and it's good to see some progress being made as I recognised at the OSC, um, but I'm absolutely at one with Councillor Carpenter in agreeing that we could do better on this. Of course, this invention has been mothered by the necessity of dealing with government cuts Wandsworth for many years enjoyed a privileged position with regard to government largesse. In 1995, Wandsworth received 44% of the council tax transitional grant for London. For many more years, Wandsworth benefited from government handouts, but those days are now over. What we do have, though, is a squeeze between a low council tax base and council tax capping, which incidentally Wandsworth contributed to um, the introduction of capping by gaming the system a uh, 46% council tax rise in 2003, followed by a freeze in 2004, for example. So this means we now find it harder and harder to raise the money we need for services. In the last decade, uh, London has seen 63% of its funding cut. Uh, here we've tried to fill this gap by uh, bolstering the budget with reserves, which are finite, increasing income from investments, from the pooled business rates arrangement for London, and through the SIL levy on developers. Each of these provides some respite, but it is not the same and not as reliable as government funding. Changes to the economy from Brexit and other factors will affect these streams of income. Um, a report for the GLA estimates that London could lose up to £10 billion worth of growth in the future. Business rates retention has been reduced from 100% to 75% and now brings in significantly less into the pot than it did. Um, if we're worried about this in London, then the impact in other areas where there's far left growth must be more significant. What is also changing is the funding regime for local government. Much heralded and greatly delayed fair funding formula is, it is claimed, finally to be revealed. There's no doubt that local government funding needed some reform. The current arrangements have 39 separate elements to the overall formula, so simplification is not merely desirable but essential. The issue is how that simplification affects priorities, particularly in the area of cost adjustment. The suspicion is that money will be taken from metropolitan areas to fund rural communities and towns. It doesn't look like being a pretty picture for London, especially for Wandsworth. So, for example, rural factors like geographical isolation and travelling time now feature significantly in the formula. Current proposals suggest that an area such as Buckinghamshire could see a £30 million increase in funding, but a reduction to London's funding. 
In Wandsworth, we face a funding gap of £38 million by 2023. So, if rural factors are to be taken into account, so should specific urban factors. I would argue that as council, we must raise concerns about the measure of deprivation. London is perceived as a wealthy city, which it is, but also a divided city. We see examples of this along the Wandsworth Riverfront, where wealth and poverty sit next to each other. Two-thirds of London wards are below the national average for deprivation. London also has disproportionate homelessness factor, which should be seen as a discrete part of the funding formula. As a city, we provide 68% of all temporary accommodation in England. We also pay a significant part of the country's discretionary transport fares. We have many unaccompanied child asylum seekers and people with no recourse to public funds and a very high level of SEND children. Finally, population growth is a significant factor and we believe this may well be undermeasured because of churn in population and the data used from the formula being based on the 2001 census. Before this election, the government announced the end of austerity and the levelling up of, uh, of the budgets. A uh, £49 billion package for essential services, £3 billion core spending power for local authorities in England. And yet last week, Sajid Javid announced a 5% cut in all departments except education and health. Austerity is now not give over. Way. Give this way? is as cynical as it is predictable. No. I hope the leader of the majority party is open to a cross-party initiative to protect funding for London and for Wandsworth. Our vulnerable children and older citizens deserve properly and consistently funded services wherever they live in this country. And I will go back to paragraph two, proposed additions to the general fund capital. Is the recommendation approved? Thank you. Paragraph three, mid-year review of Treasury management 2019-20 is the recommendation approved? Thank you. We now turn. Uh, we now turn to executive report number two, and I'll ask Councillor O'Brien to deal with paragraphs one and two from the report. No, no. Well, I'll go it down here. I'm calling Council of India, apparently, sorry. Okay. Those paragraphs are from the information, Madam Mayor, and the substantive debate on that uh, paper is, uh, on that item is on the uh, Council's uh, West strategy. And I'm Mr. if I may say, as your first speaker, and see if I may start now. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor, I know we've spoken quite a lot about bu budgets uh, for the last hour or so, but perhaps this is the most important debate. The budget lasts a year, whereas our West strategy is for a very, very long time. This is a 10-year program, a commitment to, to go to carbon uh, neutral by 2030, but its, its effect is a much longer term, and it is one that is highly, vastly necessary. It's a great privilege to introduce this uh, action plan, which builds on the decision of the Council uh, last July to de declare climate emergency and sending, setting a challenging task of uh, going carbon neutral in 10 years' time. Madam Mayor, like you, um, we both arrived in this borough roughly the same sort of time. We found this borough to be a fantastic place, and in fact, it is so. It, this borough is, uh, is incredible in that it has vast acres of open spaces, some formal parkland to sites of science, sci uh, special scientific interest. There are common land which we manage, there is common land that others manage. There are rivers that run to the north of the borough and the two of the Thames tributaries provide an incredible ecology to this borough. Wandle, which is a part of our name, our history, our ecology, is an exceptionally special river. For many years, not worth really looking at, and now it is vibrant and, and full of biodiversity and wildlife. It is a change that we have, got, we have seen happen and it is a kind of change that I think we need to happen to, to see in our borough, in our, our land, and in, in, in our atmosphere. But Madam Mayor, not everything is charming in this borough, and of course, you know, we are afflicted by poor air quality because this borough sits on its way to central London. A large number of people co go across this borough to, go work, to, go to their workplaces in central London. We are flown over by planes, an increasing amount of air pollution coming through that 
that particular source. But man, man, we haven't ray, sort of laid back and done nothing about it. On, on Heathrow, we have had a very long-standing commitment to oppose the expansion of Heathrow, and in, in fact have been robustly challenging any government, irrespective of its political persuasion. And man, man, that is a cause that we have embraced and one that you know, we will continue to do. Water quality in Thames wasn't brilliant, and which is why we, in fact, were the, one of the early authorities to support the Thames Tideway Tunnel, much to the consternation of, of others. But that it was an investment made by the Thames Water, which will immeasurably improve the quality of Thames's water and therefore its biodiversity and its recreational value. And uh, we have taken steps to reduce car miles. We have, yet, you know, figures show car ownership in this borough fall, is falling, despite the rising populations. We have the largest car club membership. And, and uh, unlike others who might say that the, that the future lies in killing off the car, we believe in taming the car, getting, making sure that the car provides a benign way of getting around and continues to enjoy the technological advantage, advantages that would make it to be so. But may all these are measures that we have already taken, they're already in, in train. But you know, this is uh, the scale of the challenge facing this borough, this nation, and indeed the world is such that we need to reach further and beyond. And Madam Mayor, our action plan does just that. Our action plan is rooted in one thing that once it is known for, really. It is known for its classic approach, leave no stone unturned. It, it, it set targets that are realistic, stretchy, but yet attainable. A challenge, monitor it regularly, and make sure the further increased targets are set. This is a task that we will have to do together with many others. And Madam Mayor, at that point, I would say thank you to, to, to Glenn Goodwin, who brought this matter to our attention. Uh, and he and his several thousand, uh, uh, several thousand petitioners. But it is also the credit to this council and every councillor in here to embrace that challenge and actually work as a team to make sure that this is one that we, this is one task that has got to be beyond politics, but also one task that actually we all embrace wholeheartedly. So Madam Mayor, the debate is about our future, but debate is about this council's commitment, but debate also will show that this council is able to do this because of its track record of both efficient management, both of money and its resources, not just, just um, financial, but its staff and resources. And Madam Mayor, I stand committed to delivering the action plan, but we will only do so in partnership with people here, but also people beyond this town hall. Thank you. Um, actually, uh, Glyn Goodwin is in the gallery, and I was uh, privileged to award him a special award last night for what he has done for the borough. So it's nice to see you here this evening. <coughs> right. Um, Councillor Anderson. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm very glad to be speaking in this debate, which is not only important to so many residents, as shown by the petition, and hello to everyone in the gallery who's come to watch, and it's really, really appreciated. Um, but also to so many residents, and also to all of us, as is uh, demonstrated by, um, by declaring the climate emergency and now bringing this motion to the chamber. Um, it's also an urgent matter of life and death, and that's not overstating it. Life and death to people and to our planet. We have said that it's an emergency, and now is the time to act with the speed that an emergency requires. I want to talk about some of the aspects that are welcome in the Wandsworth Environment and Sustainability Strategy, the need for urgency and the cultural shift we will need to make here, um, and also focus on the trans transport as aspects of the strategy. But I'll start by questioning the point of speaking here today. Um, I've given many speeches, I've gone out and talked to residents, found out the issues that matter, researched them, carefully, carefully crafted my words, come here for five years, and um, this is a ridiculous standard of recording, um, and you can't really see it. Uh, half the time the recordings are lost. It's never actually noted in the minutes. No one knows what I'm even saying here. Um, and that does not help our transparency uh, as a council. And, and transparency and the way we work has got to change as well. And that is just one example um, of one way in which we could change in the future to record and hold our councillors, all of us, to account more on what we say. So we need a shift 
And I think we're seeing it, I do, a shift in how we work together better. The petition and the actions of, of calling for a citizens' assembly, which Extinction Rebellion and others have done across the country, show that people are fed up with a slow pace of change on the environment and don't trust us, actually, to take the action we need to save our planet. We need to show that we will take that action, we will act urgently. Um, business as usual um, cannot continue. We welcome the new enthusiasm um, that's shown in the strategy, the work that's already done, um, it's not sat on a shelf, um, not being done until today. The work has already started. The high-level senior team, which is driving it forward and has met three times already. The learning from other authorities and the best practice that's already out there, not reinventing the wheel. The plan itself, um, funding for staff to follow through, and the commitment to working with residents. They are all welcome aspects of the strategy. I particularly welcome the work on baselining, which I have talked about here before, although you'd never know because we don't record it, um, and is the necessary first step to being able to measure any progress. This needs to also to include more air quality monitoring on more streets as well. So the baselining is good, and I welcome the framework for measuring performance being developed with under other London councils. It looks like fortress isolationist Wandsworth is maybe putting down the drawbridge and stepping out, and it's welcome. But are we being urgent enough? The climate emergency is very real. It's destroying lives today. It's not a problem that exists in the future. It's a problem that exists now. In 2019, we witnessed Hurricane Dorian in the Bahamas, the Australian forest fires, floods in South Yorkshire, all have causes explicitly linked to recent, to recent changes in the climate. All have claimed lives and decimated communities. According to the World Meteorological Organization, average temperatures between 2010 and 19 are the highest on record. 2019 was the second hottest year on record. Last year, the emissions gap report reported that the total annual greenhouse gas emissions reached its highest levels in 2018 and is still going up. There's no signs of it peaking. I could go on. We know that at the current rate of change, even if we limit it actually to 1.5 degrees temperature increase, over 70% of coral reefs around the world will die. But at the 2% temperature, uh, temperature increase, 99% of all reefs will be lost. We can already see a loss of biodiversity. We've got 10 years to take drastic action, and every, mother, every month that goes by is a month that's precious. Air pollution and transport needs to have more attention. We know how much um, air pollution in our area of London is very uh, dangerous and toxic, and I welcome the plan, but I'd like to urge much more action on walk walking and cycling. Transport is the most emitting sector of the UK economy. It's the one that's lagging behind. So it's the area of the strategy which we really do need to put a lot of effort into. And the fact that we haven't got any more cycle hangers, which is really small, than when we declared the emergency many, many months ago. That's just one example of where surely we could pull a finger out, we could be bolder, we could get some revolutionary acts seen. Um, that's just one example of where we potentially could be seeing a slowing down and it's not being as fast um, as, as you're saying it is. We must continue to pose Heathrow expansion. We're not disagreeing on that. And I'll wrap up um, by another mention for Hammersmith Bridge again. That's not in the strategy. Um, and working with so many community groups, the fantastic community groups, Transition Town Tooting, Living Streets, Putney right, Society fine, crew, yeah. I could go on. We need thank to be you. bolder. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. I'll wrap up by saying yeah. that the strategy has our support for now. It's only on the basis that we need to see real action in the next year. Otherwise, it will be more Anderson, of the same you're really and too little, thank too you. late. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Anderson, I um, have asked again, this, I have been assured again after the meeting, and I was assured at the last meeting, that it has been recorded. So, and last, so last meeting I was assured the same, so I'm, I'm sure it will have been. Councillor Hampton. As a, gra a geography graduate, my planet has always meant a great deal to me. All those years ago, we hotly debated what we man, or maybe woman, were doing to our fragile Earth and what consequences there would be for us. Over the last week, I've read so many council websites, all setting out what the problems are, what the aims are, setting up committees after committees and nearly all asking for more money. But there's actually very little that I could read about what we're actually doing. So I thought that I would make this personal. What am I, Melanie Hampton, actually doing? 
what is happening in adult care and health. Laugh if you like, I'm being serious. 15 years ago, I came up with a recycling strategy for the block where my office was to reuse our paper. It was a really hard sell, but eventually they found an external company that were prepared to do it. Since then, I have become an obsessive recycler. I hate waste and look for another home for clothing, for furniture, for books. Last year, I made the conscious decision to use my feet more and my car less. And yes, Councillor Rigby, I've bought the bike. <laughs> Getting engaged with Thames 21 in St Mary's Park Ward has been a great joy, watching families come together to clear the foreshore. A shout out here for Councillor Steffi Sutters, who introduced me to them. There is a noticeable difference in that area and less waste. I also discovered that my contact lenses were plastic and I now put them in the bin instead of in the sewerage system. And I bet you didn't know that wet wipes are a huge problem because they get stuck under our bridges. As a family, we avoid food waste, embrace wobbly vegetables, and I want to see more retailers like Marks and Spencers use plastic, paper bags, not plastic. With 64 million of us in this country, a personal effort does make a difference. Councillor Calland kindly gave me this beaker. And by using this and not using single-use plastics, I will save 65 kilograms of CO2 a year. The NHS has invested huge amounts of time in tackling carbon reduction measures. The Royal College of Nurses have a campaign about glove awareness. It reiterates what I'm trying to say. Small difference, small things make a difference. It's a whole campaign of theirs. The King's Fund split the carbon usage in the NHS, 59% is procured goods with 20%, 22% of it in pharma, 24% is direct energy, and 17% is staff and patient travel. That's probably going to be roughly similar about the piece. Last night at OSP for Adult Care, we discussed the procurement of equipment. I'd been in touch with the lead commissioner as I'm keen to recycle, upcycle, reuse that equipment needed for our elderly to keep them independent in their own homes. This must be a consideration for all procurement contracts. I was happy to report that 70% is recycled. But you know what? I want more. And we are going to redo those contracts, and I want more than that. The consortium also requires that all vehicles used in transit or installation need to have low emission or electric by 2024. Our sheltered housing here in Wandsworth has been reducing its carbon footprint for years. 300 homes have photovoltaic systems. Estates have LED lighting. The steer for my team is to stress test everything, to constantly challenge what we can do better. This cannot be achieved by talking and has to be done by doing. This is not about our personal responsibility. It is about our corporate responsibility as civic representatives and leaders. Let us praise what we have achieved and work